I think it's now time for members' statements. Recognize the member for Sudbury. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. I want to tell you about some young people in my community who have lost their lives to the opioid crisis and also their loved ones. Uh, Amanda Byrne told me about her brother, Ryan Packham. Uh, Ryan was an amazing man, a hard worker, and the best uncle any child could ask for, and a loving son. On August 25th, Ryan died of an opioid overdose. He was one of three overdose deaths that weekend. Devon Lachance was a 23-year-old Cambrian College music student who could master any instrument in just a few hours. And on February 8th, Devon overdosed on purple heroin. In February alone, eight people died in 15 days from opioid-related incidents in Sudbury. The impact of the opioid emergency is magnified in northern communities like ours. When someone passes away, all of Sudbury mourns, Speaker. Devon and Ryan deserve to be more than just statistics. We're in the midst of a public health emergency. It's a crisis. It's a sign killer of our youth and our residents. And we need urgent action from this government to prevent more deaths. All these deaths are preventable. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Peterborough, Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today is a great day. It's one of those days that it's positive for Ontario. And I'd like to talk about something positive that happened this past weekend in my riding. On Sunday, we had the Easter Seals Telethon. For those of you who don't know, that telethon is to raise money to buy wheelchairs for those who need it. It was a fabulous success. I'd like to, to shout out to a couple of people in particular. Graham Hart, the, uh, the MC for the event, it was his 45th Easter Seals tele uh, telethon. telethon that he was hosting. Uh, I think that is a remarkable achievement in and of itself. On top of that, we raised a great deal of money for Easter Seals, money that's going to go to people who need it. And I want to give a shout out in particular to one individual, my constituency assistant who has cerebral palsy, who is in a wheelchair, made a donation so that others could have the wheelchairs that they need as well. She recognized that that's part of her responsibility, something that she wanted to do. And I think it's, it's a very noble act on her part, and I'd like to, to recognize her for that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Thank you. Member statements. The member for Kiwetnong. We got, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, yesterday, uh, we were visited by leadership from uh, the Anishinaabeg Nation. They represent uh, 40 First Nations from across Ontario. I want to thank them for uh, traveling to spend time with us. Today, I want to honor some, uh, some other uh, very gifted members of Anishinaabeg Nation. This week, uh, the Wikimakong High School robotics team from Manitoulin Island are doing something very special. Team 5672 uh, is competing for the first Ontario uh, Provincial Championship for Robotics. I wish them good luck in their qualification mat <laughs> matches today in Mississauga. Uh, this team uh, qualified by winning the regional competition in wow. Waterloo. Wow. Also, and uh, the team has also, also set a r record score during the semifinals for the regionals. They are all First Nations, uh, all First Nations team, robot, robot, robotics team, with 25 members. They are from the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi Nations. Their hope is to inspire more First Nations youth uh, to be involved in science, technology, engineering, mathematics fields, also known as STEM. First Nations youth are uh, significantly uh, underrepresented in all fields of uh, uh, STEM study, high quality STEM education for First Nations, youth give them greater career and educational opportunities. And investing in First Nations STEM education can help our youth reach their potential. But today, I want to say good luck to the team from Wikimakong High School. We are very proud of you. Miigwech. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Don Valley North. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, the owner of the Fairview Mall a community shopping mall in my riding of Don Valley North announced a $80 million transformation project. This project involves repurposing the existing department store and other retail space into a new role of restaurant and improving pedestrian access from the mall to Don Mill subway station. Fairview Mall is a landmark for Don Valley North. For close to 50 years, Fairview Mall provides Don Valley North residents 
a local destination to get together, shop, and spend your time. Fabio Mall has created great memories and experience for those who go there. Earlier this year, I joined Fabio Mall to celebrate the Lunar New Year's with our local residents and communities. This revitalization and transformation project is creating jobs and enhancing the makeup of Dunwoody North. Congratulations and thank you for investing in our economy and community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you, Speaker. If, if you drive in Ontario, the law says you need auto insurance. The shopping around for the best auto insurance rate leaves us feeling stuck between a rock and a hard place. A report in 2018 estimated that Ontario drivers have overpaid the auto insurance industry by as much as a billion a year in their premiums. Even worse, some GTA communities, like my lifelong home of Humber River Black Creek, pay some of the highest auto insurance rates in the country. The past Liberal government's record on auto insurance was broken promises on reducing premiums. And while auto insurance rates rose under their watch, accident benefits were significantly reduced. Ontario's NDP and I have been fighting for fair auto insurance rates for many years. And at the packed town halls, I've hosted and attended on better auto insurance. Drivers spoke with one voice, enough is enough. I have heard them and on March 27th, I introduced my private member's bill entitled the Lower Automobile Insurance Rates Act, which will cap excessive auto insurance company profiteering and bring improved transparency on the information these companies submit to the government regulator. On April 18th, next week, my bill will be debated during second reading here in this House. I'm calling on all MPPs to do the right thing, support my Lower Automobile Insurance Rates Act, and side with Ontario's drivers over excessive auto insurance company gouging. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> National Volunteer Week is a perfect time for me to recognize and extend my heartfelt thanks to all the volunteers who contribute their time and energy to volunteering in countless Burlington endeavors. Their work is part of the reason Burlington is known as one of the greatest places to live in the entire province of Ontario, Speaker. There is a genuine sense of community that comes from simply caring and showing it. Joseph Brandt Memorial Hospital, pardon me, Joseph Brandt Hospital recently recognized Barb Tether, a dedicated hospital volunteer who has been supporting and helping patients for 40 years. We are incredibly grateful to Barb and all her uh, Joseph Brandt Hospital volunteers who give generously of their time and make a positive impact on the lives of patients and their visitors every day. Joseph Brandt Hospital has more than 500 dedicated volunteers. They contribute about 80,000 hours a year in over 40 areas of service, Speaker. I want to also recognize the venerable Bill Reed on his 30th anniversary of working on the Poppy Campaign for the Royal Canadian Legion Branch. Bill is absolutely iconic in Burlington and is a vital, a vital part of this important Remembrance Day awareness and fundraising drive. Volunteers are the heart of everything they do at the beautiful Royal Botanical Gardens. If you have never visited, you must go. It is a world-class destination and a huge draw for green thumbs and students in Burlington. I want to recognize Larissa Fenn, Royal Botanical Gardens Board of Directors. Thank you so much. We have so many volunteers, I, I won't be able to mention them all, so we appreciate all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. Member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. Many of us heard the recent reports that His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet, had been admitted to a hospital in India. His Holiness's personal physician has said that His Holiness was admitted for a minor chest infection. Speaker, given His Holiness's age, he's 83 years old, these reports, of course, worried us all. The Tibetan community of Ontario organized a community prayer gathering yesterday at the Tibetan Canadian Cultural Centre for His Holiness's good health and long life. This morning, we learned the good news that His Holiness is doing well and is expected to be released tomorrow. Speaker, His Holiness the Dalai Lama is not only a spiritual leader to Tibetans, but to people all around the world. He has spent his entire life traveling around the world, giving teachings, holding dialogues, promoting peace and compassion, and engaging in science and spirituality. And of course, he has been a tireless advocate for the Tibetan people and on the Tibetan issue.
On behalf of my constituents of Parkdale High Park and on behalf of all Ontarians and Canadians, I'd like to wish His Holiness good health. We join everyone in their prayers for His Holiness's long life. I'd also like to thank the hospital staff for their care and thank the people all around the world for their concerns and their prayers for His Holiness's recovery. Speaker, we look forward to welcoming His Holiness back to Canada. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise in the House today and congratulate Listowel's own Jared Kiso on his Night to Remember at the Canadian Screen Awards. Jared is a co-creator of the Smash Crave TV hit series Letterkenny, a crowd favorite from coast to coast. The show's seventh season is set to resume later this year. One of Listowel's favorite sons did the town proud, winning two major awards that night. Inspired by Jared's upbringing in Listowel, Letterkenny contains all the hilarity, hijinks, and heart that encompasses life in small town rural Ontario. While the characters on the show may come from different circles and have their fair share of differences, they always have each other's backs at the end of the day. Jared started his night by winning the award for best writing in a comedy for the Letterkenny episode, Letterkenny Spelling Bee, an award he shared with his writing partner, Jacob Tierney. He then took home the award for the best lead actor in a comedy, an award he won for, uh, won for his uh, work as Letterkenny's main character, the straight-shooting, everyday man, Wayne. I've had the privilege of watching Jared's career take off, and I'm happy to say he remains as humble and grounded as ever, a great Perth County boy. I would like to congratulate Jared on his su success, and I wish him all the best in the future. And as Omafra PA, I agree wholeheartedly when Wayne says, it's a great day for hay. <laughs> as for the rest of today's proceedings, as for the rest of today's proceedings, Mr. Speaker, hit her patter, let's get at her. I think you've upstaged the Minister of Finance today. <laughs> Member statements. Member for Simcoe North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, my family, staff, and friends partook in the annual March Mudness in beautiful Penetanguishene. Hosted by the North Simcoe Rotaract, this fundraiser consisted of 25 obstacles that participants had to crawl, climb, and hurdle through. The purpose of the annual Mudness is to promote youth mental health in the region and fundraise for local services. Mr. Speaker, I am happy to say that North Simcoe Rotaract is expecting to raise between $35,000 and $40,000 this year. These proceeds are going to three local groups who support youth in Simcoe North, Waypoint Centres Youth Wellness Hub, Big Brothers Big Sisters of North Simcoe, and Georgian Bay District Secondary Schools Equity Club. Mr. Speaker, I would like to read a number of the obstacles' names today. The Sloth Scramble, the Truffle Shuffle, and perhaps the most aptly named Light at the End of the Tunnel. My personal favourite of the day, the Great Wall, had groups hoist each team member over a wooden barrier one at a time, a task that relied on a healthy dose of arm strength and teamwork. The Great Wall really embodied the central purpose of the day. Every group faced each obstacle as a team and as a community, and in doing so, we were able to show our youth that they are not alone and that their community is here to face every challenge with them and to lift them up when they need that support the most. I would like to thank the amazing North Simcoe Rotaract for all their hard work in organizing this event and for all that they do in our community. This club empowers and engages young people in the region, connecting them with community leaders to develop their leadership and professional skills. I'd like to thank North Simcoe Rotaract, Team Dunlop, and all participants of the event, and I look forward to getting muddy with all of you again next year. Thank you. That concludes our member statements this afternoon. Reports by committees.